we're about to do a live judging of the Surah Education Delight Challenge uh, with anthropomorphic animals. And I've got an amazing uh, judge to join us today, uh, Jesus Ramirez from the Photography Training Channel. And he's going to give his wonderful, wonderful feedback. And uh, But I just wanted to show you around first before we do the judging. So this is the trade show floor. And what's happening here, we've got the Wacom guys over here on their stand. And uh, everyone's able to come in soon and check out all the amazing gear. Uh, and yeah, it's just been a great event. So thank you Adobe Australia for putting this on. It's fantastic. And uh, I, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying myself. I spoke yesterday and shared things and it was just wonderful. So I am now walking over to um, grab Jesus so that we can judge the amazing entries and show you on screen all the amazing entries and he's going to give some feedback. Now we have an awesome, awesome prize uh, to give away. So normally I always give away a $50 gift voucher to the Story Art Digital Store, but I'm also giving away thanks to Adobe. Uh, Australia, we're giving away a Creative Cloud membership, annual membership photography for the year. So that is a bonus that none of you guys knew about. So if you've entered, you might get the chance to win one of those as well. All right, so over here, we have Hasties. Hey, everybody. Us. How's it going? We've also got Mark Gaylor over here. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just thrilled to, ha to be able to have someone in person judge. This is the first time that actually someone's physically been in the same room with me judging these. Tonight. I'm not really here. I'm all VR. <laughs> It's all possible now. It's amazing. So we're going to sit down and go through the entries and judge them. So let's go over yep. and do that. Right, cool. um, Are we we're, walking their we, life? We're walking their life. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do you want to maybe share a little bit about yourself? Oh, share a little bit about myself. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jesus Ramirez. Oh, These are just my two cents. Um, I mean, it's a really cool idea. <laughs> um, just technically in the compositing side, the only thing that I would I would recommend is just ma making sure you have a cohesive, <laughs> oh, they're starting. <laughs> we may have to move. Um, we may have to. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going and then if we have to move, we'll move. But yeah. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing I see with this one is uh, sort of like a cohesive atmosphere color. I feel that not, for example, maybe the dolphin could have a little bit or more of that yellow and some of that light, because it seems like that light is not really hitting the subjects. So I, I would work on that lighting a little bit more, but I mean, overall, it's a pretty good composite. I, I think it's a great idea. It, I do feel like all these animals are really in this scene, but I just feel that the biggest problem is that the, that the lighting is not really working. So I would work a little bit more on the lighting, but um, I don't know if you have any other thoughts, Karen. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all of that. That's fantastic. All right, great. And actually, a quick tip for you guys. Um, one of the things that I would do on any, com uh, more people walking by. <laughs> One of the things that I would do on, uh, that I usually do on all my composites, it's I create a black and white adjustment layer. And when you see an image in black and white, you really, really can see what's not working. So maybe there might be some problems with the contest. So for example, I'm looking at the panda bear and I see his dark fur and then I see the dark fur of the, of the um, gorilla. And sure, they may have different shades of grays and blacks, but the darkest parts of the panda are not as dark as the darkest parts of the gorilla. And that probably wouldn't happen in the real world. So you gotta, so that having a black and white adjustment layer will help you see those things because color can be distracting. Another technique that I like using is zooming way, 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 way out and just seeing a tiny little thumbnail. And that also helps you see what's not working. Yeah, yeah, so. and, and that also helps you understand where your eye is drawn to and yes. the brightest part of the image and everything. So I guess at the moment my eye is drawn to that line yes. that's behind. Yes. We really want to draw our eyes towards those animals in the front. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And and um, what was I going to say? I was also, um, I'm trying to, you can't, you can't oh, it's not, this is, <laughs> it's see, um, I have, I have a surface, uh, uh, <laughs> a surface book and I can zoom in and I'm trying to zoom in on her MacBook. Yeah. But anyway, no, I was just trying to see, um, another tip that I like using, and you'll see that a lot in movie posters and movie posters, they add just a little bit of film grain to the entire image again, to make it more cohesive. Yeah. Yeah, so those yeah, are, are yeah. The, my thoughts on, yeah, on this particular right. image. Yeah. But yeah, overall, it's a good job. I can tell you did a good job on the masking. I'm putting the, the things together. So yeah, good job on that. Yeah, awesome. All right, next one. 
Oh, wow. See, <laughs> this person's got me because I'm a cat person. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think this is a great photo, especially in that reflection. I mean, we, you were talking about what, what your eye leads to, and right away I see, I mean, as human beings, we yeah. initially recognize faces. I know that's not a face of a human, yeah, but we eyes. see the eyes. Yeah. So good job on that. I, I like that a lot. Um, I really don't have too many comments on, on technical issues or, you know, things that I will point out. I think it's a good composite. I like how you composite it. I can't really zoom in and see yeah. things, but um, it seems like the, the grass and plants on that are, are pretty good. Maybe I would, now that I see it, I, I can't really tell, but it looks a little pixelated. So maybe... I'm, I'm assuming you didn't do this, and I really can't tell because of the, the, the zoom level, but maybe using a brush to yeah. sort of make it a little more realistic. Yeah. At least at this zoom level, it doesn't look quite realistic, but overall, I think it's a great image. Um, yeah, 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 I agree. I, just on the cat, uh, on the side of the leg, oh, yeah. the same sort of thing, just to soften it off a bit because it does feel a bit sharp, like it's yeah. not showing up. Good call. So perhaps using a, a fur brush or a hair brush to just uh, create a little bit of soft hair on the side. Totally awesome. agree. And also, yeah. I just noticed the uh, balloon back here. I'm assuming that should have been behind yes. that stick. Yeah. So make sure you, you look out for those. But overall, pretty good. Yeah, awesome. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny one. So on this one, I'm, I'm seeing perspective issues. I, I would need to see the source images just to make sure, you know, how, how things look. But I mean, I was talking about that in my class yesterday, yeah, yeah. that you really need to be careful when you're putting images together, that you get the perspective right. And a way of doing that is making sure that the ground plane matches the sky. So um, I, I really can't, can't tell what's going on, but I see perspective issues. That's, my, that's the thing that first pops into my, my brain. Yeah. Um, also the shadows. I think need a little bit of work. I Again, I don't think the, because also you, you got to think about this. Everything in the real world, world is in perspective, right? That includes shadows and reflections. And I don't think that these shadows match the perspective of the scene. That, that's just uh, my opinion. Um, yeah. Yeah. So as, uh, with perspective, I guess, looking at where the, the eye level is on each of the elements that you bring in. And when you're looking at the ground, so I guess it looks like that bike maybe is leaning a little bit towards us just to touch. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just slight and it takes a little while sometimes to yeah. see it. And also, yeah. um, if you look at the ground at this brick road they chose, it's, yeah. it looks like it's at the edge where, the, where it meets the grass. It looks like it's very, very far away, but then the scale of the grass doesn't match. Yeah. So, again, True. that's a perspective True. problem. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, technically you did everything right, but... I've always said, if you get the masking, the color, all that right, but you don't get the perspective right, it's just going to look off. And exactly. sometimes if you only get the perspective right, you can get away with a yeah. lot of things. <laughs> exactly. So That's perspective is, is a big one. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. all right. Awesome. All right. Next one. Oh, wow. So I don't think this is a composite. Yeah. Um, and it's just a couple of these images too didn't have names on them. I know most of you named them, but just remember when you entered to put right. names on them. So. Now, if it is a composite, it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. if it is a composite, it's amazing. If it's not, then it's a good photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably not a lot of feedback there. Right. Yeah. Thank you for entering. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is detailed. Yeah. So going back to what I said earlier on the first example, um, you can tell that the background is really not part of the foreground because of the contrast. Once again, if you put a black and white adjustment layer, you can really tell that this, uh, what is this, a beaver or whatever, yeah, the, whatever this animal is um, in front of the tree, you can tell that he has so much more contrast in the background that it really doesn't work. Now, I understand that there's things as such as atmospheric perspective where something that is far away wouldn't have the same contrast, of course, but in this scene, that tree is not that far away from that beaver. So the contrast might be a little off, but it wouldn't be that far apart. So again, make sure that the darkest part of your subject matches the darkest parts of all the other things in that same three-dimensional depth. Again, something that's really, really far away will have less contrast, of course. Like that tree way back here in the yeah. background, that makes sense, but not that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah. th that's the biggest, biggest thing. The second thing, what I said in the first composite is uh, um, the atmospheric color. Everything has color. Like, um, it may be, the atmospheric, atmospheric color here may be yellow or green yeah. or something else, but again, all the subjects need to have it. Yeah, yeah. 
And also the same point as before, the, um, what is this, leprechaun character um, with the green hat. He's way too bright compared to the beaver. And they're standing in the same space. Unless he's some sort of myth mythical creature that's glowing. Yeah. But he's not glowing because he's not emitting light to the areas around him. That's right. Yeah, so. particularly I think the legs. <laughs> Whoops, I almost knocked over the computer. <laughs> the legs and the shorts, you know, really are way too bright compared to the rest of the scene and the direction of the lights. So, right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. Okay. But great idea, it though. Cool. It's it's very cool. And see, a, yeah. what I've been noticing in a lot of these is that they have incredible imagination to come mm -hmm. up with these stories. Mm -hmm. The only issue are the technical issues in Photoshop, and that's the good part because you can fix those really that's easy. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of times you get composites that are technically excellent, but there's no story, there's no idea, there's no heart. Yeah. So I'd rather people show something like that because that is so easy to fix That's right. compared to teaching yeah. creativity. Creativity, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, so this is, exactly. this is great. Yeah. Oh, wow, this is a really good one. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. Um, I would say that maybe the only thing is, for some reason, the skin tones don't look right to me and I know it's a dark nightclub mm -hmm. but there are um, color grading techniques that you could use that maybe just target the skin tones and not make them look so weird that's the only thing that pops into my head but overall I, 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 I like it I don't know if you have any other thoughts or yeah, comments yeah yeah I guess um because I, I, I know who some of the artists are okay. and I'm not obviously not telling this is he has to judge but um there's I, I can see a particular uh, look this artist uh, brings out with all of her art and, and it actually it's different to what I've seen before and the color turning and everything but it, it makes it new and um, I actually like that because it stands out to be something that's particularly um, you know all of your images have that particular feel and look which is yeah great so different to how any of us might do it but yeah there's that particular yeah. style so. yeah yeah Cool. And also, I guess I would say the same thing I've been saying over and over about the contrast, because some of these dogs have different contrasts and they're right next to each other. So that's not yeah. even color at all. Yeah. And something that you can do when, for example, I'm assuming that how many dogs? One, two, three, four, five. We got like 10 dogs here. If you have all these different photos, you can actually color tone one image and then yes. and then put it on all the yeah, others. So you don't even, yeah. even have to do it on, on all of them. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's maybe just a, a few of the dogs have a, a lot of light on their faces where some of the others don't and they're in the same position. So uh, that dog on the left there yeah. is quite bright compared yeah. to the ones there. So just sort of matching it, you know, they're in the same light. Also, if you're using old photos that you can't really go back and reshoot, yep. the dogs are not available, something that you could do is to sort of fake the lighting is use color and do of, of dodge and burning yep. to sort of fake the light and try to match it. But, you know, yeah. ideally you would want to shoot it that yep. way. Yes. All right, next one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is a really cool one. Um, yeah, so I mean, I like this composite. It's really, I mean, it's really funny. My, my, the first critique that I that I see is that it, it seems like his neck has that depth of field that is not matched by the shirt. So I would just blur the shirt a little more. Yeah. Yep. And also, if you notice, there's um, the lights coming. Uh, it's pretty strong on his neck, and it doesn't follow through on the shirt. Yeah, so I would just add a little more. A little bit of a good lighting there. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. besides that, I think it's a good composite and maybe work a little more on some of the edges and using a hairbrush as you suggested That's earlier. Right. Yeah, but I mean, overall, it's a great idea and it's pretty fun and I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the ways, if you've got the ability to take the photo of the person, again, because maybe you can't take the photo of the draft again, but take the photo of the person again and focus further forward with the same sort of depth of field so that's a really natural blur of the t-shirt if you didn't want to blur it in post. Right, and yeah. people are starting to walk yeah. in here. So, so we might we're going to have to move. We're going to take a two-second break to yeah. walk over right outside where it's a little quieter. Can you come with us? It's getting busy. So hopefully everyone is uh, enjoying watching this and I'm sure it's streaming while I'm checking that it is. So uh, we'll have this up for later watching as well. I know there's some people in the UK that are fast asleep right now and can't watch. Here in Australia at the moment, so it's almost the middle of the day now. Here, yeah. oh, it's much brighter here. You can see us. Oh, our connection's unstable over here. It says our connection's unstable, but hopefully, it's okay. 
Okay. Double check. We um, go back into it. So it's not broadcasting. You stop it. Uh, no, that that one's okay. Uh, okay. So if there's any problems, guys, just uh, comment because I am keeping an eye on the comments. Uh, and if you have a problem with the reception or anything, just let me know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe you want to spit in here, Marcia. Yeah, I'll get a lot in the print. Oops. Oops. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, these are really cool. So, um, well, first thing, just because I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's okay. Because <laughs> I, I notice a lot of a lot of problems with contrast and atmospheric perspective, which is sort of the same thing. Yeah. I would probably the the are they pterodactyls? I can't really tell what they are. The the birds or animals flying, dinosaurs flying. I would add a little bit of atmosphere on them. Yeah. Because in your scene, you're making it very clear that it's cloudy, that there's, I'm assuming this is dust or mm -hmm. steam coming off the rocks. I'm not really sure. But the point is, is that there's a lot of particles in the air. There's things between our eyes, the viewer, and the th furthest elements of the image that yep. they have way too much contrast. So you would yep. need to add some of those elements. And usually it's as simple as adding maybe a layer style with the same color as yep. the sky and setting it to like five, 10%. I'm not really sure what will work in this case, but um, that's the biggest issue. Same with the T-Rex back here. Yep. Once again, he's got too much contrast yep. and I don't think the depth of field matches the, yeah. the scene. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a very shallow depth of field, this image. So those uh, elements that are further back really need to be softer, more blurred. You know, even with the pterodactyls in the sky, you could lower the opacity of them just uh, on their own and they're, they would look more see-through, but they would be bringing in some of the color from behind. So there's a few different ways that you can do it, but just really looking at that, um, the depth of field and matching it and the color and everything. But yeah. That's right. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is... See, for something like this, I wish I could see the source images. Yeah. Um, but I mean, overall, it looks pretty good. I'm trying to, um, it's, a dark, it's a dark image and with the light, coming on right to our faces yes. now, it's yeah. hard to see, but yeah. yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, Yeah, I, I, I don't have, yeah. Much, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, the only real comment that I have just technically in terms of compositing is maybe that light source is not emitting light to the surface that's right on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that you attempted to create that light by blurring it, which looks good for the lantern, but that light would also be hitting that wall right next to it. So maybe yeah. brighten that up somehow. And, yeah. and you saw a cool compositing. Uh, I did. I, yeah. I, so she, she'll show it to you uh, at you. some point. Yeah. And, yeah, um, right. yeah so, so that'll be great for that because that light Absolutely. is so close to that wall yeah. that it yeah. will be brighter. Definitely, so, yeah, yeah. And, and also probably adding a little bit more of that colored light to the top of his hat yes. and head, and that yes. will just bring it all together as well. Yeah and, and, yeah, and and the reason, I guess, at least for me, I'm focusing on that is something you mentioned earlier in this broadcast, is that's the brightest point of the image. It's yeah. the one where our eyes goes to first. Yeah. So it'll be a good way of having maybe even light rays, I don't know, something that, that brings us away from that light. And adding yeah. that same highlights, as you mentioned, on, on the characters would be good for that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. All right, next image. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is not meant to be a, a uh, you know, yes. photorealistic, photorealistic rendering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it looks great. The one thing I'm not so sure about is the artist blurred a lot of the skin of the baby or the, the child miss the fingers so that kind of looks yeah. weird so yeah so that's the biggest thing if you're going to apply that effect to the entire uh, body yeah. then it's great it matches but then the fingers sort of stick out because they have yeah. so much detail and nothing else does now that will be okay if the artist was intending for us to focus on his hands i'm assuming we don't have to focus on his hands because you're not doing anything interesting they're just he's just yeah. holding his arm yeah. i think that's a boy um but yeah 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 that's true so maybe just a little bit more refinement there yeah but, but overall yeah. I like how they we talked about it in some of the other images this one seems like it has a a, a, a color scheme that's on all the objects consistent. of the image consistent yeah, yeah so yeah. It, it works well yeah and some good dodging and burning yeah done there and yeah. yeah real artistic sort of look to it so. <laughs> I, oh, I just want to make sure I didn't double click that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you guys have me with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. 
so again, um, we've been talking about this before, the contrast of the, of the different objects in the scene don't match. This chandelier thing here with the candles really doesn't match that scene because the brightness of those candles are just too bright for this scene. Um, also, the cat's coming through this bookshelf, mm -hmm. and it, it seems like it's way brighter in that room than yeah. it is in this room, and, yeah. and that light is really not coming out coming of that out. room. Yeah. And the edges are way too sharp, yeah. I think. So yeah. maybe I would sharpen those edges, have more light come out. Yeah, a little bit of light spill. Yeah. yeah. And also, I guess that's the, we were talk, we've been talking about it, where your eye is drawn to. I, I personally would probably look at darkening that room because your eye is drawn mm -hmm. to that area and it's probably not the area you want the eye to draw to if you're wanting to be drawn to that cat that's on the top of the book uh, and so perhaps darkening it down so that room is dark would then bring the focus back to the main cat right yeah and, and, and just to give a different perspective if you wanted that bright light yeah. maybe light rays coming light onto rays. the cat yeah yeah, yeah. so exactly. you have you have guiding angles lines going to the cat that's right yeah yeah and I've got the light ray brushes if you uh, if you win, you can go and buy them or you get them for free, but you can go and buy them so you can use that and just stamp those light rays on and there change the go. blending mode. There you go. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a really cool one. So, see, I mean, one of the easiest ways of matching the color scheme of an image is just to do a, an effect like this. And obviously it makes it more realistic. Yeah. I yeah. think the artists did a really good job on, on the composite. The one thing I will say, and it goes back to everything we've been saying, I think there's a lot of contrast and detail on the elephant, and that same contrast and detail is not found on the woman uh, petting the elephant. Yep. So I would either match the detail with her or make the elephant uh, match her, either or. But yep. they yep. both need to match, but I yep. like it. Yeah, yeah. And they did a great job on the contact shadow on the hands, I think. That's so right, it, yeah. It really feels as, as if you were touching the touching elephant. It, yeah. And if you were to match the things that we just discussed, I think it would look even more realistic. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, next one. Cool. So, so with this one, it, it's sort of the same, the same things that we've been discussing. You guys have to pay attention to the depth of field. Mm -hmm. So we can see that the rocks that the girl is standing on are really, really bur blurry. Yes. So then there is no way that she will be in focus and then mm -hmm. have the stand in front of here be in focus. So there's a lot of different contrasting different. levels of, of um, focus in the image that it just doesn't work. So yeah. that's the number one thing I would fix. On the positive yeah. side, I think that they did a really good job on ma matching the tone of the entire image so that's that's, yeah. a, that's a big plus that's right yeah also when working with with sands like on that pineapple there i could just tell they just use a soft brush, soft brush. Yeah. yeah so yeah. just try to work more with the contours that are actually found in the sand already and i think they might have done that here with the second pineapple i think they yep. did a really good job following the contour that's there yeah. already yes and they should have done the same thing on that one that's right yeah and you can use brushes that have like that granule kind of effect and use them to mask back so it looks like the grains of sand that are coming through instead of just a soft yeah. brush yeah yeah and actually yeah. i really like that second pineapple here so yeah, match, that's to match idea. what you did there on that other yeah. pineapple and the other two, actually. <laughs> I, it does look like the rock that she's standing on, uh, whether that's placed in or it's been blurred later, but it's definitely a lot blurrier than all the rocks next mm -hmm. to it because you've got the sharp waves behind. So yeah. I, I'm not sure how it's Yeah, because we go from focus, out of focus, out of focus, focus yeah. out of focus, and yeah. then everything yeah. is, yeah. The main thing is you should always have, if you've got a shallow depth of field image, you should always have just that one point of focus, one plane of focus, and place your subjects there. If they're in a different position, then you need to match that plane of focus. And um, I don't know if I'll be able to describe this without the image, but a, a, way, a way I tell people to think about this problem is, we've all probably seen those flat illustrations of, of scenery, where you may have like a palm tree, and then in the background we have like mountains, and then even more mountains, and then even more mountains, but then the palm tree is really dark, and then the, the mountain closest to us is a little less dark, and then the mountain behind that is a little less dark, and so on and so forth, so that you can see that, and your yeah, brain yeah. recognizes tone. tone. Tones is what creates depth in our yeah. eyes. So um, that's a good way of thinking about this. What's closest to us, yeah. that may or may not be the sharpest thing, but if you decide that it is the sharpest thing, that's gonna have the most contrast, and it's gonna have the most details. Yeah. And you gotta think, in a way, you gotta think of layers. What's next? What's after that? What's after that? And the further away that we get, if we decided to have contrast and detail in the front, then the things that are furthest away are going to have less detail. They're going to be a little blurry. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm actually really glad that we're able to talk about this because I think it gives us an opportunity to kind of 
make everyone aware of that because sometimes you just don't consider the depth of field and, and how to match it. And also, sometimes when you've got deadlines, you get yeah. lazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that happens to me a lot. Somebody would say, hey, what happened there? I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah deadline. exactly. All right. Next oh, one. now, another really cool one. Yeah. This sort of reminds me of the one that I showed in, in my class a little bit where I, have a, a, I had a little boy riding a bear. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I liked it a lot. I think they did a really, really good job. Um, the only things I would say is, for some reason, I'm not liking the corner here of mm -hmm. that tree. It seems a little weird. I think overall the image is great, but the, the light sources on the top are really... Yeah. distracting to my eye but mm -hmm. that's just maybe subjective but yeah. I think overall it's great maybe I would add a little more light or brightness to the central figure yeah they seem a little too dark because I sort of lose the bare yeah. space yeah. to the tree uh -huh. so maybe yeah. just work a little bit with lighting to enhance the areas that you want people to see so uh, I, yeah. I think that's a, a, it's being covered by our, our little screen there but I think that's yeah. a light source right or not am I right yeah, it seems the light, like it's coming from yeah from there. the right because yeah. little boy, yeah so maybe highlight the you know tiger's head and, yep. and the bear just so we can see more of his shape because I can't really see where his his arm is and his body is so maybe using light to emphasize those contours will, <clears throat> excuse me will make it come out better but yeah overall I think it's a good idea great composite it seems like they got the uh, reflections in the water as mm -hmm. well so yeah yeah fantastic job. And they did a great job with the atmospheric perspective on yes. that peak in the back. So that's, that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So that's really good. That's a really good example of that atmospheric thing that we were talking about. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow, another cool one. Now, I think a couple of people did enter twice because I've just realized, but yeah. um, I was maybe meant to delete one of them. Okay. Uh, so this one, I think, is it's an entry, but it's not qualified to win the okay. other one is the one that's in so, yeah yeah in, in the, i mean it's very similar critique right yeah. that yeah. light exactly yeah so it's we would i would pretty much say the same thing same about thing this one yeah mm -hmm. yep it's a very cool series yeah i like it <laughs> oh wow this is really cool wow see for something like this technically I, I really don't have much to say because obviously it's a very abstract scene yeah they did all the their basics it seems like the maybe work a little more on that on that edge there but it's it's not bad on the neck but for something like this it's so artistic and so expressive that technically it, it, it all seems to work yeah, exactly it's something that you put up on a wall and yeah just beautiful art print oh wow yeah okay going back to what we were talking earlier about about um depth of field see how yep. the front is blurry mm -hmm. the ducks are in Sharp. focus mm -hmm. and then everything else behind it is blurry so that's mm -hmm. that's pretty good and I'm, I'm really having a really hard time figuring out what was composited in so that's actually mm -hmm. a good thing mm -hmm. i'm looking closely yeah I, mean, I can see on that duck there oh uh, yeah it does look like yep. it's maybe not cut out probably so i'm guessing it was put in but then the other ducks were done pretty well so yeah so i mean it's hard to know but that's a good thing it's a good thing it's a good thing Where, yep Actually, um, at Creative Live, yeah. I was doing my session a couple weeks ago, not a couple months ago now, for yeah. Photoshop Week, and I had one of my composites on there, mm -hmm. and one of the uh, um, producers said, oh, where did you shoot that picture? And I was like, yeah. I did it. It's a composite. <laughs> I was like, that's excellent. That is the best yeah. feedback. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this, to me, could be a real photo. Mm -hmm. I mean, except for that little thing so, that you yeah. caught. And obviously, yeah. if we were able to zoom in and expect yeah. it more, we may see other things, but just glancing at it, I don't see... But see, it goes back to what I said earlier. Everything's in perspective. The depth of field is it, it's, it's cohesive. Yes. Yeah. The contrast is cohesive. So when you get all those things, then you, yeah. you know, you, it's hard for the brain to tell. And now that I'm looking at it more, I think that now maybe the, yeah, because the horse mm. looks like he's a little bit further, little bit further a little yeah. bit further. But the thing that really um, brought that to my eye is look how much darker the necks of the yep. birds are mm -hmm. compared to him. So that's what's leading me to believe because again, our eye is noticing the contrast of this, so that's yes. closer. Yes. The horse doesn't have that same contrast, contrast. that looks further away. Yeah. So yeah. that might be the, the telltale sign here. Yeah. But pretty good. Okay. Wow. Now, I don't, I don't think this is a composite. But again, but if it is, a, it's amazing. It doesn't have to be a composite to enter, by the way, guys. It's just, um, I guess we keep more feedback when it's composite because right. we've got more to talk about. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, because then if it's just a photo, it's very subjective, and that's yeah. just my taste versus your taste. Yeah. I like cats. Somebody else may like, <laughs> like dogs. dogs. Yeah, I see. So. 
beautiful dog. Yeah. <laughs> and focus is on the eye and yeah. yeah I mean, it's shot. a good photo. Mm -hmm. And I like how they have the paw, yeah, paw, the paw print, print on the, on the, the ball. That's yeah, great. That's right, that's right. Okay. See, um, this is actually a really, really good composite. And I think that there's only one thing that really, really gives it away. And it's the contrast on his face, on the ape's face compared mm -hmm. to the rest of the scene. He seems a little too flat, but at the same time, a little too bright. I don't know if you see that. Yeah. Um, so that will be my only critique because I'm comparing it to maybe mm -hmm. his the rest the of his shirt, body. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And also uh, his, yeah. his hands too. Yeah. So I would just make those just a tad darker, and I think you just mm. you're done. It's great that using the texture to bring it all together and everything really works. Yeah, very well. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I think just a, just a tiny little bit more contrast, and you, you got it. Yes. Yeah. Another very expressive um, abstract composite. Um, with these, I don't have too much, too many um, things to say about it. Again, it's very expressive. It's not supposed to be realistic, but I will mm -hmm. say that the style of it, it's the same style throughout the image. The only thing that's sort of bother me, bothering me is that that same style wasn't applied to the central figures. Uh -huh. yeah. So I would maybe yeah. continue that style so, with yeah. them as well. Yeah. Painterly style, yeah, I yeah. agree. So the, the baby is obviously looking very photographic yeah. and realistic. And to be able to sort of paint that and make that more painterly all the way through, you might use the smudge brush or uh, there's a few different ways of doing it that just bring that into the overall picture. And if yeah. I understand that they may want it to have the baby be yep. like in a dream or something yep. and sleeping and, sure. and um, yep. I don't know what the story behind it is, but that's the feeling I'm getting. In that case, make only the baby not part of this mm -hmm. dream sequence because mm -hmm. in the real world mm -hmm. um there's uh deer reindeer whatever it is wouldn't it be there with a baby mm -hmm. on it right but yeah. if you were cartoony it'll be more you know quote unquote believable true, true, true. so that's just my opinion yeah. on that and I, I guess one thing too with this one um it, it's such a beautiful image and i'm sure that uh the family will love it and the baby's there but I don't know whether I know. Like I didn't notice where the baby was at first. Um, I, I mean, that's maybe a compositional sort of thing. And I guess after a while, you kind of realise that, that the baby's there, but it's not immediate. So uh, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends how long people have to look at it. We've been chatting about the, how quickly people view things, and you know they're scrolling through, and they might actually scroll past because they don't notice what's going on. Yeah, yeah, and I was just thinking about this. Um, we've been looking at a lot of composites, and yeah. some of the things that we have been talking about are positioning <laughs> or lighting to uh, focus the, the main scene or object yeah. in the image. Yeah. And something that's helped me a lot is I watch a lot of, well, first of all, I watch a lot of movies, mm -hmm. and cinematography is all about that, how to place people in scenes or main subjects in scenes. So yeah. what I do is... Um, I watch a lot of YouTube videos on cinematography and, and putting scenes together because yeah. that really helps me think about compositing because um, you may not realize it in a movie, but there might be like a coffee pot pointing one way, but that's there because they want you to look that way. You know what I mean? The, those guiding lines. Yeah. So in things like this, maybe the, you know, the grass blades are pointing towards the baby and, you know, instead of, instead of this tree branch going that way, it's going the other way because now it's going to point at the baby. You know, so there's, there's way, yeah. different elements that you can use in the background, foreground, um, making things brighter or darker to force you to look at the baby. But in this case, I think also the baby may be a little too small. Yeah. And he's hidden behind that, that yeah. grass. Yeah. So maybe just, you see the, the grass is hiding um, the, uh, front? Yeah, the yeah. front of the deer there. Maybe yeah. put that one in front of the baby yeah. and put the bigger one in front of the, because it's got a long neck. So it, you yeah. Know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I guess it, it comes down to planning. So when you're first planning a composite, making sure that that, bit, that part that's meant to be the focus is the focus of the way through. Right. Yeah. So yeah, watch YouTube videos on cinematography. Yeah. It'll, it'll help you with your composites. Yeah. On, on this one, it, it's, it's, I think it's pretty good. Um, the biggest thing I would say is, I'm not really sure how they would fix it. Um, Actually, no. You know, the, the more the more I look at it, the more I, I think it's a good job on, uh -huh. on the legs, right? Yeah. It yeah. just looks a little weird. And I think the reason is that the legs are just too bright. Yeah. Because the light source coming, obviously, from above the giraffe, we see the highlight there. Yeah. But for some reason, yeah. the legs just seem a little too bright for my eye. I don't know if you agree. Uh, yeah. And maybe, I don't know if this is just me, but they look better than I'm normally used to seeing on a draft. <laughs> Is that just me? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know if they've been 
squished or not. But but yeah, it's maybe it's just the light and. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is if you look at the uh, grass button right next to yeah. the leg, it's really dark. Yeah, yeah, lights, uh, yeah. The giraffe's legs are so bright yeah. that it just looks weird on my yeah. eye. So again, yeah, maybe just a uh, layer adjustment, um, blending that down so there's some shape. Yeah, and, and also um, notice how I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that obviously the light's coming yeah. from the right. Yeah. And you can see the little girl's shadows. Look at yeah. look at the shadow on the back of her yeah. leg and the yeah. highlight in the front. I would match, match that on the, on the giraffe. Match it. Yeah, I think that'll you can really yeah. see the shadows yeah so usually when you compose because obviously the, yeah. the, the the giraffe is what was not there and was placed in there right so look at the shadows of the real photo right. and match the, the composited the object to match the, the scene yeah. that you're putting in it yeah so yeah uh, yeah and often when i shoot if i'm not if i don't have the objects you know i'll bring someone in and stand them there and do a shot so that I can match the shadows later. So it's a really good way of just making sure that everything works. Yeah, and yeah. if you don't do that context clues with the image, for example, yeah. if that little girl yeah. wasn't there, we could look at the trees in the trees, background. Yeah. So always look for the context clues yeah. on the, the main image, the background image, and then match everything match to that. Exactly. Uh, Wait, do we see we've this done one that already? one, yep. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a really, really funny one. <laughs> I know a lot of the background about this one, so I'm just going to let you chat yeah. about this one. Wow. I mean, yeah, besides nitpicking, I really don't have, because I mean, it's, it's a nice story. I like how the light, this light lamp here is, is about to focus, but then it comes down to the bunny and we have different bunnies here. And you know what I think about when I see this picture? It, this would be like what a bunny family would have taken a picture of like in the 80s, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, again, I don't want to nitpick, so I really, the one thing I probably will say is, I think I think the shadows under the chair are bothering me for some reason. I don't think that's the way they would really cast on the, on the, real, on the, real, on the real world, but I mean, overall, it's a great, maybe do a little more of the shading. I mean, again, I'm nitpicking. I think it's good. Yeah. I know this one, uh, there was a lot of feedback in the group yeah, and, a, yeah. and a lot of changes, so it was really interesting to see the progression of it. And yeah, yeah great end result, I think. Well done. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a really funny one. <laughs> sort of what I said earlier about uh, the other image, um, the hand is just too bright mm -hmm. for, for that scene. Yeah, everything else is darker. Yeah, yeah, and the, I mean, again, I'm looking at the zoomed out, so I really can't see the yeah. details, we can't zoom in. Yeah. But at least from this view, it seems like his face has either been smudged or it's really cartoony and, and not a lot of detail, but then everything else has a lot of detail. Yeah. So yeah. maybe I would try to, I would, to be honest, I like the detail on his outfit. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to blur that, but no. maybe somehow add more detail Shopping to his face, yeah. maybe. Yeah add like um, textures on top of him so we could see skin. I don't know, yeah. something. But yeah. I feel that he needs more detail on his face because everything else has so much more detail. True, yeah. Yeah, Great. but overall I like it, yeah. Nearing the end, I think. <laughs> last, All right. last couple of images. I'll let that pop down, okay. I think it's a good composite. Um, for some reason, this is just my personal preference, so not, not a big deal, but I think that that light should maybe have a little bit of color. It just seems too, too white. Yeah. Also, again, going back to the thing that, that Karen will show you at some point that I showed in my class, but I, I would make that hotter, brighter type of a, a right yeah. on the top yeah. there. Yeah. But besides that, yeah. Because the light is supposed to be really bright, and it's supposed mm. to be really bright because you, bear, you can yeah. see how bright it is on the bear, and I just don't think it's, the rays are bright enough, mm -hmm. and I don't think the top is bright enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and perhaps warming up the yeah. light. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, just plain white seems yeah, a little boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't know about the crop. I was just trying to click on it to see if I could There's bring more, it more yeah. bit because, yeah, the crop seems to be, uh, I don't think I can enlarge this, but it does seem to be, I'll double check it later, that it's, a little it's cut off at the feet. So. And if it is, then don't show too much of the left-hand side, maybe bring it in more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this one is um, another of the things we've been talking about with contrast and atmospheric perspective and all of that. Mm -hmm. See, 
Yeah. I mean, clearly she's supposed to be in front of that elephant, like directly in front of it. But our eyes doesn't see that because she has way more contrast than the elephant. Yeah. And in this whole scene, the little girl is not is the only subject or object yeah. without that same color tone. Exactly. So, yeah. And the lighting direction is different. Right. So the lighting is very, very soft and uh, in the background. There's some light rays that have been added to make it look like the light's coming from behind to match the girl. But if you look at the rest of the scene, that's not actually matching up. Uh, so I would have, uh, you know, if you can reshoot the girl, I don't know if you can, but if you could reshoot her in a softer lit environment, uh, where there's not as much contrast and shadow on the front and light on the back and just really match that that lighting to the elephant and the rest of the scene. Yep, I yeah. agree with that. This is the final one. Awesome. I don't know how you feel about this, but I really like how the dogs are really bright in the center. Because yeah. again, it goes back to your point. That's the, the subject. And I really like that the background is just dull and it's not so strong and it's not really distracting you from it. And if you look at the books, they'll have that slant. Yeah. So if you start looking at the image in the top left corner, mm -hmm. they guide you to the dogs. You know, it's just, there's those lines that this is the center. That's right. Yeah. I think it's very well composited. Um, I like the reflection on the glass there. Yeah. So I think they did a really good job. Um, again, besides nitpicking a couple of things here and there, I think this is a really good composite. I like how, I mean, this is all subjective in my opinion, but I really like that shelf there, right? I'm not yeah. in the middle, but a little offset, mm -hmm. but then we have this other picture the here. Chair, yeah. yeah. Another dog. Yeah. And yeah, that just soft kind of atmospheric light that's yeah. smoky in the background. Yeah, no, I like this a lot. The one thing that I would say is I think they did a great job on the left-hand side of having elements that point us to the center yeah. of the image. Yeah. The right side feels like it's missing something, uh -huh. so maybe adding another element that sort of guides you back onto the center. But, I mean, just I'm, I'm covering like half the image here, but the dogs, like this bottom part with the dogs, I think is excellent. Good reflections. Um, may, see, the, the, this is one of the small nitpicking things. You see how the chips have, it seems like they have more shadow than the glasses, even though the glasses are taller. Yeah. So maybe I would just add a little more on the glasses, but not, not a big deal. Yeah, no, I yeah. think it's a great photo. Yeah. Uh, that's the last one. So great. it is time to choose. Oh man, can we see them all again? Yeah, let's go to all of them. So I have to pick, <laughs> but there's so many good ones. You do have to, so oh, I'll just scroll no. through. Let me you see. Well, uh, here, I'll, I'll, I, I, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Wow. There's a lot of them it's this like, month. There's a lot of them, yeah. 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 There's, I mean, there's a lot of good ones that I, I hate. <laughs> I, 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 it's a lot of pressure, <laughs> it's guys. It's a hard bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I think I made my, my decision for one. I don't know how many people have to pick, but I, I have my top two. Okay, choose two, so you, you winner and you runner up. The runner up will get a $10 voucher. All matcher. right, so I'll give you my runner up. Yeah, okay. My runner up is this cat one, because you know I love cats and I think it's a good composite. I think they did a great job with the reflection. Yeah. Now, I'm a cat owner, I know how difficult it is to take pictures of cats, so just yeah. to get those two shots alone is extremely <laughs> difficult. Um, technically, we talked about some things that could be worked on, yep. like the balloons and the grass blades there and a little bit of the, of the uh, paw. But it had a lot of the things that we saw the other um, composites missing, the color toning, the contrast, they did a good job. Uh, again, just a couple little things they need to fix and I think it's a great, great yeah, image. Yeah, fantastic. So, so well done. I'm actually not sure that who it is. Uh, Kaleo is the cat, I believe. So yeah. we'll, we'll figure out who's, who's the winner there. But well done on uh, runners up yeah, so, for that one. So, so. That means. And, and also yeah. going back to it, uh, I, I know that we criticize a lot of the technical aspects. It's not a perfect composite, but I feel that there's a story. Mm. I feel that there's a character. And I, I just I just like the depth of the image. You yeah. know, like yeah. they did a good job with the negative space and yeah. a couple other things. And just having that uh, face in the center with the reflection in my point of view is yeah. interesting. Um, we didn't talk too much about this when we critiqued uh, the composite, but yep. I also would add maybe a little, a few more shadows. So again, it's sure. not a perfect composite, but I, what I said earlier, yep. I think the story is good. And a lot of these have great stories, yeah, so yeah, that's a good yeah. thing. I mean, I guess 
nothing can be perfect. Nothing will be We're perfect. We're all no. going to be, yeah, no. um, critiquing ourselves <laughs> forever. Oh, yeah. so. so a quick side story. Um, one of the uh, composites that I showed yesterday, which was one of the, of the bear, yeah. Yeah. I took that to a, a Photoshop hero of mine. I don't know if you know uh, Bert Monroy. He's a, a, he, he was the sixth Photoshop user ever. Yeah. He wrote the first book on Photoshop. He does these amazing photorealistic uh, illustrations. Mm -hmm. And he lives in Berkeley, California. He speaks at Adobe Max mm -hmm. and a lot of big conferences all over the world. He's a friend of mine. And I took him that photo thinking, oh, this is a good one. And he just, you know, oh, you're yeah, missing this. You're missing. And, and he was right. Uh -huh. But, yeah. you know, you, you can never, you know. There's always somebody who knows just a little more or catches something catches that you something don't see. You miss. Yeah, yeah, so true. Yeah, so anyway, so I like the story in this. I like the color tone. Also, um, red and green, uh, even though it's not really a strong green, those are um, complementary colors. I, I think it works well. Yeah. And the, the one for uh, my winner is the very, very last one. I really like that composite. I think it's a good story. I think technically it's, it's very good. I like the reflections. I like the lighting. We talked about the bookshelves. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just a great, great composite. And um, this is Tracy Willis. Okay. Uh, Tracy, you are incredible. Your work is amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I just, this is, this is an incredible Yeah, and, and I could tell, Tracy is the artist? Tracy, Tracy, Tracy yeah. I could From tell. From the UK. Yep. Oh, awesome. Yep. Hey, Tracy. Um, I can tell she spends a lot of time looking at detail and yes. that glass. I, I think that's what did it for me. When I saw that, I was just having that thought of, oh, yeah, the, the, yep. the, the way the card would look behind that glass wouldn't mm. be that way. And I, I don't know if it was done on purpose or not, but she sort of just did the corner, mm. so, which I thought was, was a good choice because she wasn't really trying to show off. You know, just like, yeah. I don't know. It just, yeah, attention it just, to detail. Yeah, attention to detail. Yeah. And it, yeah. it, just, it just feels like a really, really good, um, I mean, I could actually see this almost being a photo, and not just a composite. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's a great it's incredible. one. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. And all her own photos as well, which is something that I, I love. That she takes all her own photos and puts everything together, and just incredible work. So well done, so Tracy. So I, I have a, a question for you. So um, uh -huh. before doing the stream, you said that I I could give away something yes. if I wanted to. Yes. Yes. So I have a course on compositing. So I want to give one away, but I'm not going to pick the winner. Okay. You are. Okay. And I want you to pick someone who you think would benefit from having a good compositing course. And yeah. I know that's a really tough that's decision tough. for you because <laughs> I'm sure everybody here would. Yeah. But maybe somebody who's been active for a while or who, who you think has, put, has earned it. Okay. So it's my, okay. it's, it's a 80, 80 American yeah, dollar course and yeah. I'll give it to, uh, to them for free. Um, to whoever you think would benefit from a, a compositing okay. course. And I talk about a lot of the things that I, uh, that I talk about are talking that, uh, about yep. in that course. So hopefully next time after watching the course, they can show something in it and they maybe win Yay. a creative cloud account or something. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, I have someone that okay. I'm going to give that to. So um, I'll go on to actually her image. So Tracy, you've got a creative cloud membership as well. So well done. Now I'll go back. So that is an incredible gift uh this one here awesome i like that one a lot yeah. Yeah. so uh this one is tracy perrin and this little bunny she'd taken the photo and this little bunny passed away Aww, after she'd taken the photo so, so this is an amazing memory of this pet and i know tracy how much work you went you know you did to keep improving 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 this and i think this will be so beneficial it, it's so you. interesting that you chose this photo because when i was shooting my runner-up this was actually my runner-up really but you said something that deterred me from choosing this person which was you said that there's been a lot of feedback, feedback and you have been, you know, working with them. So I thought, well, it's unfair because that they, they, you know, had <laughs> had, help. had help, right? Uh -huh. So this this one was originally my runner-up. Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that we chose this person. So yeah. the way this will work is I'll I'll give you a coupon code. You can contact them and yeah. and, and get it scored away, and they, they can just go to my website and download it for awesome. free. It won't cost them anything. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much um, just for yeah, just being part of this. I'm just going to see if I can go to video only right now. Uh, I think we're full screen. <laughs> so just, and i got to fix my name tag. Look at this. It's not even showing. Jeez. Oh, it's fine too. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much for all that um, time and feedback. And I know how much 
everyone's going to benefit from this. We'll actually put this up in the Storia Education Group as well, uh, so that everyone can see it and comment and share. So, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for all that time. Thank you, Hasis. Yeah. Really appreciate it.